So today I'm working on a project that I've wanted to do for a very long time since I was a kid. So thanks for clicking on this and I'll kind of show you, show you what we're going to be working on starting today. Essentially this. So this is my old three wheeler. I had this since I was a kid and uh, I've always dreamed about putting uh, like another axle on the back so it would be, you know, able to go through more stuff. So I'm kind of a little more grown up now and I have some little bit of spare time, not much. And uh, I've got a little bit of money to throw at this thing. So uh, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do this. So I kind of sourced this axle from a local guy that had a parts machine and I got the rims off eBay, paid way too much for them. Got a chain, got some sprockets, some tubes for the tires. And then, so like I said, I, I've had this for a long time. You recognize the, the Maxxis Razor tires that were really popular back in the day. I amazingly found two of the exact same size on eBay used, and they were the, the cheapest tire I could find, used or new. So it worked out great. They're a little more worn, but uh, same size, same brand, and same vintage. So this is, I'm excited about that. I also picked up this frame that I can use the mounting off of. got it locally, and it's already been hacked up, as you can see. So I don't feel too bad about wasting this frame. It's kind of a junk one anyway, so I only paid a few bucks for it. So I think having that uh, adjuster back there, I can just cut that off and weld it on something. That should work out great to mount that axle. So people always say these split rims are a pain, but this is what I do. I, I throw the tube in there, throw some air in there so it keeps it shaped so it doesn't get pinched in here. And then you just throw the top of the rim on there and snake that thing through there and it should should go together just fine. But um, it's been a few years since I've done this, so we'll see. All right, we got some soap on the bead. Help it pop on, see how this goes. We're almost there. There, I got the other one. It took me, I don't know, just a few minutes. It's, that's easy, easy to do. So here's one of the ideas that I've been thinking of. The, the axle fits in here on either way. You can, you know, either way, it's pretty simple. There's just two bolts. But then you look at where this bolts up and that bolts up. It's the same distance apart. It's strong, you know, so I can you know, run something from here to there and it will be strong. And then I would just have to figure out something from here to there down below. But I think that might be, and then just cut this frame off, you know, maybe right here or something like that. And then might, that might give me some, I want to put like a, a rack. If you've ever seen this, like a Polaris six wheeler, something back here, but that might work. Um, without really having to do too much. And I can just kind of weld that up a little bit better on this frame, cut this frame off. And uh, we'll see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep brainstorming here. So here's kind of the first little mock-up. I think I am gonna go this route, just doing it back to back. I threw some angle iron in there, drilled some holes, bolted it in. This one's already flatter than a pancake. That makes me mad instantly. It, it loses air fast. I'm not sure what's going on, but all right, I'm running into my first issue with this. Just I'm just checking all the alignment and stuff like that, making sure it's all level and everything. And um, so these, you know, are pretty flat on both sides. Pretty flat, right? And then when you step back and look at the alignment of it, you see that this back axle is over this way some more by about an inch or so maybe. So I figured out it's not the frame. The frame is good. You can see the, I put the plastics on, those bars go straight in there. It's the axle since I flipped this axle. So that's fine. Um, I just don't know. I, like I said, I'll just kind of space this out maybe and just I gotta get this slid over. But the distance from here to there is like seven and a half. And then the distance from there to there, like the, from the flanges is like six. So I got about an inch and a half, which makes sense. You know, that's about, about an inch and a half. I decided 
since I'm going to cut this frame up anyway, I just cut the front of the frame off and I just did it. Boom, boom. Both frames pointing that way. Not going to mess with the, with the spacing of this and doing it backwards and all that kind of stuff. So I'll just chop off, chop off the bottom parts here and then just kind of weld that up somehow. I want to have this removable from, from the machine. I'm, it'd be so easy just to weld a bunch of crap on here, but I don't really want to have it just stuck to this one. I want to be able to take it off. And so um, if I find a nicer one, I'm never going to get rid of this one, but if I find a nicer one or something like that, I can just uh, unbolt it. Or if I just want to use this as a three-wheeler, uh, I can just unbolt it. There. Yep, I got that trimmed up a little bit. So two bolts here, two bolts here, factory mounting plates for the for the grab bar on both three wheelers. Trim the frame a little bit there and there. That one was broke off. I'll have to trim that a little bit more. But now I gotta figure out the bottom part here to connect the basically I, I need to connect the axle to the axle, but this axle needs to stay free to do the chain adjustment on that back chain. So so far I haven't had to touch the exhaust, which will eventually have to be looked at, but that's kind of the least of my concerns right now. So the it's not gonna be perfect, but you can see my I got a clamp in there, and so what I'm doing, my highly scientific method, I got a box of shells here. So that box of shells can just slide through there. And it just can't quite slide through there. So we'll give this another squeeze, maybe. And it kind of catches a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, of, a little bit more there. Maybe just one more little squeeze here. There, perfect. So that's uh, that's how I'm getting this thing aligned. So it should should work just fine. So here's what we're doing. I ran these two. They're like quarter inch strips. See, they'll go up there, and they're bolted onto a factory where the skid plate mounts. So it should should give us some rigidity there. So I'm just gonna we'll tack tack that one on there, and then this one's got a little. Got to bend this flange a little bit to get it to line up, but that should work out pretty good. Here's the welder I'm using. It's a Hobart 135, a little bit older one. I got it at an auction for like 80 bucks. It cleaned up. It looks perfect. Uh, just a 110 or 115 or whatever. And uh, ignore these ones. But it there's the welds on it. I'm not a professional welder, but... Uh, it, it's a nice solid weld, good penetration, a little bit of splatter, but not too bad. So I'm I'm pretty satisfied with this part of the frame part of it. So, I mean, if you take each one of these pieces here, there's like three different tie-in points on all of it. So one, two, three there, one, two, it's welded there, three, one, two, three. I mean, so this thing, this back frame part, is connected here here and here this one's connected here here and here so i mean it's and and of course you know this is inch and a half angle iron so i mean we've got this type of force we've got this type of force we've got this type of force covered so i think that's good and all uh when i test drive it i'll see if it moves around a lot but i've been shaking this thing and twisting it as best i can and it's it seems really solid but the next step is uh getting the chain lined up so that's the beauty of i'm glad i switched this frame to actually face the same way so basically what i have to do here now is see these sprockets are just bolted in there so i just basically have to space this sprocket out here and then figure out some bolts and spacers and stuff to keep this the stock sprocket there and then space out a little bit more um, to put the this whatever you want to call it other sprocket uh, here to drive that one so just got to play the spacing game but that requires taking the axles out to get at these bolts here so i gotta slide these axles out real quick so here's a, a trick my grandma taught me when working on three-wheeler axles is you can use a needle nose to get these pins or cotter pins out 
But to slide them out, you know, you try to do this and it doesn't work all that well and they slip and slide and you try to grab them with that. Use one of these instead, if you can see it right there. A snip or a side cutter or whatever. Grab a hold of them with that. They get a better grip, it just slides right out. All right, I got both of the axles out. As you can see there, the sprocket attachments are a little different on one of them versus the other one, but should still accomplish the same thing. I'm not gonna touch like this spacing in the back part of this sprocket because this is the original axle from the three-wheeler. So I just gotta pull these bolts out, find some longer ones to space this out, and then just mirror that on here. So should be pretty easy. Just gotta play the game of measuring and spacers and all that kind of stuff. But this new sprocket that I'm gonna be using, these, these double sprockets, I got two of these. They came with these spacers in here. And I think they, I don't know if they're gonna fit or not, but you basically have to clear it, you know, to get two chains side by side on either one of these. And that might do it. I don't know, that would be awesome if those worked. Okay, so let's measure these. 14 millimeters. So I think this is gonna work. Don't mind those, these bolts are just some random ones I had laying around. So we'll measure the distance between these two, 0.68, so whatever that is, in fraction, and then in millimeters, 17 millimeters. So I think that should give us enough space to have chain on this one and chain on that one. I suppose I can throw the chain on there to see for sure. So I got these, just slid the axles in there and I'm just gonna see how straight this is. So it's it's flush with this front sprocket and it's this back sprocket is a little bit pointing that way basically, but it's lining up back here and that's where the chain's gonna wrap. So I know this isn't going to be perfect. It's not a high performance thing, but I think that should be, I think that should work pretty good. I don't think I'm going to have to space this out. And uh, hopefully the chain stays on. We'll see. But here's a quick shot of how I it just basically, I threw some grade eights in there. I didn't go with metric because they're like three times as much. Three eighths, grade eights with those spacers. I kind of lucked out with those. So... That's how it'll look and run the chain around there. So we'll get everything put back together real quick. So there we go, got the sprockets on there. Might have to tighten that chain up a little bit, but the spacing worked out really well. I just left that old, old sprocket on there and here's kind of the spacing between the new and the old one. Plenty of space there. I don't think that's gonna bother anything. So, yeah, that should work great. I went with a uh, gold chain because why not, you know? So, I think it's done. So, I'll just give a quick, another quick walk around, check it out. I still need to get this thing running. It hasn't been running in a couple of years. So, I've got to clean the carb on it, throw some fresh gas, but...
consider this a success. It seems to be working great. There's not a whole lot of flex. The chain hasn't lost any tension. Uh, everything seems to be working the way it should work. I went through and I cleaned the carburetor and changed the oil on the three-wheeler so it runs good. The, uh, the, the triangulation and everything on here seems to be working quite well. So it, it doesn't seem like it's, it's flexing a whole lot. So yeah, I'll uh, get some more footage of me driving this thing around, but uh, this is it for the video for putting it together. So thanks for watching.